Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to do a very large tile with alcohol ink. I haven't done one of these for quite a while and they're very popular at the farmers markets around here. So uh, with the Christmas markets coming up, I think it's time. So first what we need is shop towels and you can find these in your husband's workspace. That's where I find mine. I don't know where he gets them. And you'll need isopropyl alcohol. I use 99%. I think in the States it's a lower percentage. But uh, I use the 99. I've never tried any lower than that. So I can't comment on the difference between them. Um, I also use a small little squirt bottle that I found on Amazon either at Amazon or a dollar store. I never know. I should write this stuff down when I buy it. But uh, I use it just to squirt lightly. And then as far as the alcohol ink, I use Ranger. And I also use more Ranger. This one's a mess. I think it's Ranger. Ah, Jackard Piñata Colors. I don't have a preference. I find the Piñata, the Jackard, easier to get the lids off. And they don't leak as much. Sometimes when I open up one of these colors, it just gushes out. And I find that the Jackard does not do that. So I don't really have a plan other to make than to make it very, very colorful. And uh, we may as well just get started. What I do first is clean the tile. There's always some dust or specks of something on them. Oh, I get my tiles at a secondhand store. It's a building store in Grand Prairie. And uh, it I think it's called Refit. And uh, I get dozens and dozens of tiles for under $50. Um, great prices. And uh, some are chipped, but most are not. This one is not. And this is not a stain. This is actually the tile. I don't mind because I'm going to be covering it anyway. Um, you want something with a smooth surface, though. If it's a rough surface and porous surface, it will just absorb and it won't spread and slide nicely across the tile. These tiles are not as smooth. I can show you the difference. These little tiles, you can see how shiny they are. And the ink just slides on these things. It's a lot of fun. On here, it doesn't slide as much, but it is not porous and it does move. So I'm just going to go ahead with that. Sometimes I touch the camera cord, um, the <laughs> camera, it's an old iPod. So let's get started. Just going to pour a little bit of alcohol. This is rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, it's the same thing. And then I just nice and lightly spread it around my tile and it picks up fingerprints and uh, any dirt that's on there. Yeah, all right. And now the fun part. Let's just drop some ink. Now this is Indigo Ranger. I'm just going to leave it there. It doesn't matter if it dries out. I'm going to put some orange. Again, Ranger Valencia. Um, we'll put some Piñata by Jackard. We'll put some coral down. It's good to shake these every time you use them. Sometimes the pigmentation sinks to the bottom. What else? Uh, green. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. I have 
three or four drops of color in here of ink and the rest is alcohol and what I like to do is just spray a little bit here and there uh, it becomes a background color as you move the inks around I also have a red one here and it is I've had it a while and it's not uh, coming out as smoothly as it should and I don't even care about that all of this stuff is just going to be blended in anyway oh I'm using a master's airbrush master airbrush I got this on Amazon in Canadian dollars was I think under sixty dollars and I absolutely love it the compressor is about the size of a pack of cigarettes it's just it's ideal and it works nice it doesn't push too hard and uh, it does move the ink as you'll see now I'm just going to put a couple of drops down in the center I like to let the inks blend in with the alcohol before I start blowing it around now as I said I don't have a plan um, some days the ink cooperates and some days it does not so if it does not I park the item I have a stack of tiles that have started and uh, not happy with where it's going and then I just leave it there for sometimes weeks or months and I pick them up occasionally and uh, they turn out really nicely I certainly don't throw them away that's for sure now if I stop blowing I'll have a bit of dried ink in a ball and it just looks terrible so I try not to stop blowing um, I'll show you here like sometimes it's it would be fun if this dried exactly the way it is but it won't it wants to come back on itself and it makes a ball at the end that is really not appealing Now because I don't have a plan to begin with I just drop color on the tile and start blowing it around sometimes the entire project becomes these long things and that they those look really cool they don't look like natural flowers but it doesn't matter it's abstract
I think we need a little bit more color. Uh, let's go with Ranger Mermaid. Jacker Piñata Chili Pepper. Now, sometimes you'll get this black line around the outer edge of the ink. Um, that is where the two colors are meeting. And I kind of like to try to get rid of that. A little bit late now but that's okay it'll go away we'll force it out Now you can see that the color, the alcohol is picking up the background colors that we laid down. That's okay. I don't mind that. There's not a lot of color coming up from this uh, mermaid color. I thought it would be more intense. And I have an 18 inch turntable here. Uh, it is by Copco, C-O-P-C-O. -C -O. 
I don't remember where it came from. I know my husband bought it for me for Christmas two years ago, and I absolutely love this thing. I also have a smaller one for um, when I'm working with smaller tiles. We need more color. I'm going to go to the Jacquard Pinata Sapphire Blue. Just trying to dry it out a little bit so that I can start moving it with some alcohol. That's nice. Now we're talking color. I'm going to add some chili powder to the other side. Just a little bit there. Can't have too many colors, although some colors don't play well together and they turn brown and just yuck. But I have made flowers with only brown and they turn out really cute.
And I think I'll add a little bit of uh, sapphire blue over in here. I don't have uh, enough deep enough deep colors in there. That's about two drops that I laid down. I think I might put down some of this teal as well, just to darken up on this side. So you can see already that I really don't have a plan. I just, uh, I'm like a kid with a new box of crayons. I just want to look at all of them at the same time. All right, I think we'll add some more of this Valencia Orange by Ranger, and I'll put it over here, and I'll add a little bit more in here. And I can move it while it's still in a puddle just to uh, move the color around so I've got more area. I don't always do that though. Sometimes I just wait till it's good and dry before I start adding the drops of alcohol. You can really see how this orange has turned to brown when it's mixed with these other dark colors. I do like the effect though when the colors overlap each other and blend and you can really see it in here. This is really pretty right there. If you don't have an air gun, 
and if you're a beginner watching this you probably don't you could use a straw I don't recommend it I tried that the first day I started playing with the ink and uh, I had such a headache I was really stoned within minutes it wasn't a <laughs> pleasant stone either um, the other way you can do it is by purchasing the air that um, you would use it for cleaning keyboards on a computer for example that compressed air those are really expensive and they don't last very long at all once you start using this um, the other thing is a hair dryer a hair blower you can use it if it has a cool setting that's the best if it doesn't it just doesn't blow as far because it will dry out the ink quicker but uh, certainly can be used I'd like to break this up a little bit. A lot of uh, alcohol ink artists try to avoid these long spider legs. I love them. I just <laughs> I love working with them. No. Uh -oh. right. If you put your chair on the hose, you won't get any air coming out of your air gun. Well, that's really a pretty blend right there. Same here. All right, now I use cotton swabs when I want to get rid of a section. I don't want to add alcohol and have it spread around. So what I do, I hope I'm in camera here, yes I am, is I will put a few drops of the alcohol on the swab and then just rub it and it's gone like magic. There's another really ugly one here. Before I get one of these spidery legs in that direction, uh, I want to get rid of it. Otherwise, I might have to delete something that was really pretty. And that's it, garbage. I don't buy the name brand swabs, obviously. But there are so many really inexpensive cotton swabs out there. The other thing you can use cotton swabs for, I will demonstrate. Uh, 
Where do I want to go? Red. Okay, I'm putting down a huge pile of alcohol for this demonstration. And I'll get a couple Q-tips out so I don't have to reach in front of the camera. Now, as much as this looks really nice, I may want it to not spread off of the page. So what I can do is, while the ink is still wet, put a swab down. And uh, this one didn't turn out very well. Let's just do this. No, not enough. And then I can just pick it up by rolling my swab and blowing a little bit more and blowing again a little bit more, just keeping it from rolling off the edge. And I don't paint my edges when I'm done. Um, some artists do, and uh, I choose not to. I, I seem to like it better without. And then I will pour resin on this to protect it. I'll put several coats of uh, Kmar to protect the ink, to seal it. And then I'll pour resin on it. And that's like a five-day process because you have to wait at least a day between each to get it thoroughly dry. Now, that's a nice one. I like that. Anyway, there you have it, folks. I'm going to keep playing with this. I will come back on a second video and uh, show you where I'm at and then show you what I do with the center. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.